Gran Turismo 7 launched back in March, and much like every other Gran Turismo title, was littered with unique and eclectic vehicles. I'm not talking about the latest offerings from the automotive supercar brands, or that slight variation of a Nissan Skyline that apparently makes it a completely different model to the other 16 Skylines in the game. No, I am talking about the cars that you don't expect to see in the game at all, or any driving title, but add a new dimension, whether that be significant cars from history, or fantastical concept vehicles that will never make it to the real world, or even just something off the wall wacky. They add pizzazz and give the franchise charisma that many other simulators fail to deliver. With that in mind, here are a selection of cars that have appeared in the Gran Turismo series over the years, and added something unique in their own way to each game. Think of it as a weird car retrospective. The first Gran Turismo from 97-98 didn't really have that much in the way of surprise vehicles, as it was the opening title and Polyphony Digital was still working on the format. Still, it introduced those of us in Europe to the world of fast Mitsubishis, and those of us in America and Japan to the world of unreliable TVRs. We take it for granted now, but that was eye-opening back then. One car that stood out from the first title was the Dodge Concept Car. Originally known as the Dodge Copperhead, it was renamed after a legal claim. It was essentially going to be a cheaper Viper under the changed body shell. It was available as a standard and racing version, and would also reappear in Gran Turismo 2. The curvaceous styling and bright colour looked like something from another planet. The sequel came along a couple of years later, and we saw a car that hasn't appeared again since, but remains an utter icon. The Renault Espace F1 is the combination of a minivan or MPV and the best motorsport engineering around to create what is essentially a Williams F1 car shelled as a humdrum people mover. It had the engine straight out of the 1993 Williams F1 car, kicking out a mental 800 plus brake horsepower, and the body shell may have had the appearance of an Espace, but was made completely out of carbon fibre. It was a ridiculous idea, and that is exactly why everyone loved it. Gran Turismo 2 also featured the Ford GT90, which was a concept car previewing a potential replacement for the fated GT40. Using parts from a Jaguar XJ220 underneath, the idea was ultimately not pursued by Ford, although looking back it does have certain similarities to the latest Ford GT road car. Also in this game was the first appearance for a series favourite from Suzuki, the absolutely bonkers Escudo Pikes Peak, which made its debut in-game as the 1996 version, while an updated 1998 version of it appeared in every other main series game afterwards. This was a monster of a car with close to 1000 brake horsepower and massive downforce, meaning it could be almost anything else on track. There was also a similar car from Suzuki, but less powerful, called the Cultus, but most people only remember the Escudo after grinding their way to the best car in the game. Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec was the first game to make the jump to the PlayStation 2, and as a result, like the first GT release, had fewer cars in the roster, all recreated from scratch for the new hardware. This meant only 180 cars versus around 650 for the previous game from 1999. As a result, there isn't a great number of bonkers cars, but it did introduce us to a franchise mainstay in the form of the Tommy Kyra ZZII, or Z. This was a prototype car from a Japanese tuning company that sadly never made it into production, despite Autobach 7 purchasing the design and renaming it the ASL RS01, a lovely looking car with a wicked turn of speed that remained in the series up until GT Sport. The Gran Turismo concept spin-off games were based around real-world motor shows. Think of them as a DLC, but purchasing a separate smaller game. The 2002 Tokyo Geneva Gran Turismo concept game was released shortly after GT3 and was filled with concept cars and early prototypes. Admittedly, this was quite forgettable as a game on its own right, but they did introduce the ungainly Toyota Pod and futuristic Dome Zero, amongst others. The latter was a concept car from 1978 that looked amazing for the time, with its angular lines and wedge-like shape. I like to think of it as a Japanese interpretation of a Lamborghini Countach, with a hint of DMC DeLorean. The Toyota Pod was a collaboration between Sony and Toyota that produced a car with artificial intelligence that could detect the driver's mood and offer advice to improve it. Probably get out of this car? It could also display its own moods using the LEDs on the body, and also had an antenna that wagged like a dog. These would both change should your driving be particularly aggressive. It was only ever seen in this game, but it certainly sticks in my memory. How many other games feature a car with a colour-changing tail? Gran Turismo 4 is the game that introduced the most alternative cars into the series, with a plethora of them appearing for the first time. There were cars that seemingly had no place in a racing game, but that was part of the charm. 
This included the 1949 Volkswagen Beetle, 1954 Citroen 2CV, 1963 Daihatsu Midget, and the 1972 Honda Life Step Van, to name just a few. There was also the 1886 Mercedes-Benz Daimler Motor Carriage and Patent Motor Wagon that are recognised as the world's first cars and offer an awesome one-brake horsepower to play with. Simply ridiculous to drive, but I love the fact that they even exist. The most poignant of all cars included in a Gran Turismo release, as without them, we wouldn't be discussing car ownership driving, or racing video games at all. Once you've completed the world's slowest lap of the Nordschleife, if you can get up the hill to start with that is, you could step up to the heady heights of the 1915 Ford Model T Tourer with a mind-boggling 20 brake horsepower. Where is my seatbelt? Also included were a host of classic or rare racing cars that have become icons since. The two Chaparral cars, for example. The 2D, for starters, followed by the amazing 2J twin-engine fan car, banned from racing in the real world after its debut season. One of the engines powered the wheels with over 700 brake horsepower, and the other was an air-cooled snowmobile engine that powered two fans, sucking the car into the ground to create downforce. Alongside these were such rare classics as the 800 brake horsepower Toyota 7 and the 1937 Auto Union V16 Type C Streamline that was, at the time, the oldest race car in the whole series. These sit alongside concept cars such as the Land Rover Range Stormer concept and Mitsubishi HSR2 concept with active aero control from the 80s, to the hydrogen-powered Toyota Motor Triathlon race car and the Nike One 2022. Yes, Nike made a car for Gran Turismo, considered by many to be a precursor for the future Vision Gran Turismo cars that appeared later in the series. GT4 also included the Mad J Leno tank car, featuring an engine out of an M47 pattern tank and installed in a custom chassis. This went on to feature in the 5th and 6th games, and once I partook in an online race using just these cars around the returning Deep Forest Raceway, Probably wasn't the best idea, but fun nonetheless. The fifth instalment also brought a few more bonkers cars to the series. It was where the X prototypes first appeared in the shape of the Red Bull X 2010 prototype, designed by Red Bull and Adrian Newey as a race car without any restrictions. It's even included an up-to-date reinterpretation of the aforementioned fan technology sucking the car into the track. This led to a car with amazing cornering ability and top speed. Next up is a couple of my favourite cars, which is the Volkswagen Kubelwagen and Schwimmenwagen. These were World War II-era German vehicles. The Schwimmenwagen was actually an amphibious vehicle that was based on the underpinnings of the Kubelwagen, although sadly we couldn't try out the amphibious ability in the game. Gran Turismo 6 introduced another set of wacky and unusual vehicles. One such example is the diminutive light car company Rocket, designed by Gordon Murray and evocative of early F1 cars. It's actually from 2007 and GT6 is a joyous little car to drive. There were also a couple of real-life racing cars that were great additions to the game for different reasons. The Delta Wing ran at the 24 Hours of Le Mans and featured a very unusual layout that looked more akin to a drag racer than an actual circuit car. The rear wheels were out far away from the chassis and the front wheels were almost next to each other inside Inside the nose cone, resulting in a very distinctive shape. Also released via paid downloadable content was the Ayrton Senna West Surrey Racing 1983 F3 car, which was a brilliantly endearing car to drive. Then there was the whole Vision Gran Turismo idea that started in the sixth instalment, an idea from the game's producer, Kazunori Yamauchi, that is simply a single question to car manufacturers. Would you please design your rendition of the ideal GT car for us? This led to many unique and interesting creations. One of the most ingenious came from Chaparral, a brand owned by General Motors who, as we saw earlier, is no stranger to racing ingenuity. This time, it decided that a normal engine wouldn't cut it, and it decided to use a theoretical propulsion system in development for spacecraft and aircraft. Ooh. It uses lasers to create forward momentum by heating the air through pulses of laser energy, so I'm told, but I have no idea how that would actually work. I mean... Who does? What I do know is that it's the strangest sounding car in a video game. Ever. And I bought it again on GT7 as soon as I could afford it. Probably the maddest and least expected vehicle in all of Gran Turismo history also first appeared in GT6, the lunar roving vehicle LRV-001, better known as the Moon Buggy. It was only available in a lunar exploration mode which allowed you to drive it on a simulated lunar surface in low gravity. In truth, this addition is tricky to manoeuvre and annoying to do the challenges with, but it is definitely memorable. Only Gran Turismo would model such a car and set challenges on the moon. The literal moon. It's just that it would have been fun to actually drive it around a track. 
GT Sport continued the tradition of crazy cars with the first introduction of the SRT Tomahawk XV GT that has a stupendous 2,500 brake horsepower and highly active aero, making it the fastest thing around the track in the whole series. That is, providing you can manage to tame it. This is so fast that you must totally retrain how you drive to get anything out of it and avoid hitting just about every wall imaginable. Mind-bending. So that brings us to the present day and Gran Turismo 7. We continue to see a crazy collection of weird and wonderful vehicles, some of which have been mentioned throughout this video and many that have become stalwarts of the franchise. With some crazy new Vision GTs as well as rare classics and GT3 inspired road cars, Gran Turismo continues to lead the way for wackiness. Which of the cars newly introduced in GT7 would you add to this list? Make sure you let us know in the comments below. Also let us know which quirky cars from previous titles you think should have been featured in this video. Subscribe to the channel for more racing game content like this and hit the notification bell to see these videos as they are released. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, keep it pinned, and have a great day.